Hey guys, it's your boy Mark back with another video here to give you my review of WWE WrestleMania 37 Night 2 2021 pay-per-view review. The show got off the air about 10 minutes ago and uh, you guys know yesterday, yep we're here now guys, we're here now WrestleMania 37 Night 2 and your boy is reviewing Night 2 of course and um... And, uh, yeah, you know, you guys saw, if you saw my review yesterday, you guys know that I absolutely love Night 1 to death. Night 1 in itself was amazing. Uh, pretty much a perfect show for your boy. Um, I absolutely adored, uh, WrestleMania 37 Night 1. Uh, that in itself, best mania since 33. Period. For me. Um, I absolutely loved every second of it. And now... A day later, we're finally on night two. The show got off the air like 10 minutes ago, like your boy said. And, um... What'd your boy think of WWE WrestleMania 37 Night 2? 2021. I loved it. Okay. I do have problems with it, though. Okay. It wasn't perfect. Uh, but I, I still loved Night 2 a lot. Uh... Nowhere near as good as Night 1, but it was still an awesome show. And you know what? Your boy considers um, this show to be the um, the full metal jacket of WrestleManias. Because, like, if you guys want to know what I mean, like, it's kind of, like, famous that, like, people consider, like, the first half of Full Metal Jacket, like, so much better than the second half. Um, and, like, the second half, kind of underwhelming. But, like, for me, you know, WrestleMania night, like, the first half of Full Metal Jacket, which in my analogy would be, uh, WrestleMania 37 Night 1, that absolutely amazing, pretty much flawless. And Night 2, which in my analogy, the second half of Full Metal Jacket, um, is still great. But definitely not as good as the first. You know what I mean? I still loved Night 2. I still uh, had a blast watching the show. And, uh, yeah. Um, my own, I have, like I said, I do have quite a lot of flaws with Night 2. Um, I was pleasantly surprised by uh, the main event, to be honest. I mean, the winner of the main event. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, WrestleMania 37 Night 2, um, let's, uh, review the show, alright, um, like I said, nowhere near as good as Night 1, Night 1 was so much better, Night 1 was a 10 out of 10, but I would give Night 2 a 9 out of 10 still, it's still an awesome WrestleMania, uh, show, but yeah. <sighs> I thought I was about to sneeze. Um, but yeah, um, anyway. We open up WrestleMania 37 Night 2 with Randy Orton versus The Fiend. This is the second time that Randy Orton faced a Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. First was at WrestleMania 33, and now here at WrestleMania 37 Night 2 in the opener, and I'm glad this was the opener because I actually wasn't really feeling this match at all, I wasn't really looking forward to it at all, and uh and I, I was really happy when I heard it was opening the show because, you know, let's get the crap over with, and like, the thing that I wasn't looking forward to personally over with is what I mean but, um but, uh, Randy Orton had some cool ass attire he uh, he had these really cool white trunks, and then ran, and then the fiend uh, we saw him backstage or like in the entrance area or something like that, and he was this burnt up face that you saw like at Fast Lane, and then like he moves forward and then lightning like kind of strikes him and then he's back to the regular fiend and that was cool unexpected I won't lie I was kind of excited about seeing like the burnt fiend wrestle you know what I mean. But, uh, yeah, and then Alexa Bliss makes her entrance, and, um, and, uh, um, 
and like it's kind of like toying with Randy Orton, and then there's like a big ass like Jack in the Box like next to the ring, and then Alexa Bliss like winds it, and out of the box comes the Fiend, of course, and then like uh, the Fiend like kind of dives and hits Randy Orton. The bell rings during that air attack, and uh, the Fiend like destroys Randy Orton for a bit actually, and like Randy Orton got some offense when they fought outside the ring. And by the way. They brought back the Fiend's red lights uh, that he had during his matches for this match. And, um, but like the Fiend, like, he, I remember the Fiend did the Mandible Claw onto Rand Yorton and kind of, I think, he dragged him like back in the ring for a little bit. And then, like, and then uh, let's just skip to the end. Alexa Bliss, she had like this black, gooey stuff. It was so cool to see. And it distracted the Fiend. Rand Yorton, RKO's the Fiend. One, two, three, Randy Orton defeats The Fiend, defeats Bray Wyatt for the second time at WrestleMania, and I was, I called it, I actually made a predictions post on Facebook, and like everyone, and I mean everyone was predicting The Fiend to win, and I honestly, deep down, thought he probably was going to win, and I was like, you know what, low-key, I think Randy Orton's actually going to win, and when he actually did, I was like, holy crap, that was so cool that, um, that Randy Orton actually won. And by the way, it kind of like just, as of right now, we only know that it looked like Alexa Bliss was trying to distract the Fiend. I don't know if that was actually intentional. But, uh, wow. WrestleMania 33. Orton beats Bray Wyatt. Four years later, some things stay the same, motherfuckers. <laughs> oh man, so many smarks were bent about that. But, um, yeah, it was, a uh, that was fun. I, I'm not gonna rate this match, but I loved this match, okay? Even though I can't rate it, I loved it, trust me. I really did enjoy the heck out of this. And I'm really, ha I, I was really satisfied that Orton actually won. Alright, I, I was rooting for Orton. I rooted for Orton at, at WrestleMania 33, and I rooted for him here. So, yeah. Next up, we have the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship match. We have Nia Jax and Serena Baszler defending against Natalia and Tamina. Uh, this was a, this was a good match. I really enjoyed Natalia's technical stuff in this match. Tamina kind of got her own WrestleMania moment when she went one-on-one -on -one with, uh, Nia Jax in this match. She did the, it was like a female version of Hogan versus Andre. Uh, she scoop-slammed Nia Jax. Uh, she kind of botched the, uh, scoop-slam a little bit. But, um, it was still cool. It was still awesome. And she actually did, like, a super fly uh, diving splash like her father, rest in peace, um, Jimmy Snooker, um, but, uh, oh my god, I wasn't happy with the ending, I forgot, um, Natalia had, uh, t uh, Nia Jax in the sharpshooter, but Nia Jax wasn't legal, Shayna Baszler, um, put the Carafuda clutch onto, uh, Natalia, and she passed out, and, uh, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler still your women's tag team champions. I was rooting for Natalia and Tamina, but for what this was, it was still a good match. Um, I enjoyed. It. I was rooting for my girl Natalia, but uh, oh, maybe one day. But anyway, and next match we have a match that honestly was better than I expected. Uh, we had Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens. This match was awesome, man. It was only it was under ten minutes, okay, but I loved every second of this match. The minute the bell rung, Kevin Owens hits a freaking like, rebounding, um, what's the word, um, uh, pop-up album. Why do I keep forgetting, like, what that move's called? That was cool, and Sami Zayn wisely went out the ring, and, uh, Sami Zayn did that, that awesome, uh, that move he does in the corner, I keep forgetting what it's called. He grabs Kevin Owens and kind of like suplexes him into the corner. I keep forgetting what that move is called. But he did that like twice in this match. And that was so awesome. Um, and uh, Sami Zayn got a few halluva kicks in there. And Logan Paul, I, come, I hate that I forgot to mention this. Logan Paul was at WrestleMania. Logan Paul actually had his own entrance. He got booed by the crowd. Um, I, th I, th I thought it was a mixed reaction at first, but then, like, I heard, yes, he's getting booed, and it was pretty cool, you know. Um, I get why people boo Logan Paul. I won't lie, I was 
I was excited to see him, okay, at WrestleMania. I thought that was kind of cool that he was actually appearing at WrestleMania. I know the wrong thing he did three years ago, um, but I'm sure he knows it was wrong and all that, you know. So, the only thing someone can do is apologize, you know. But, um, anyway, um, this match was awesome. Loved every second of it. I saw Sami Zayn fight Kevin Owens live five years ago when they came to New Zealand. And here they are, five years later, having a match against each other at WrestleMania. Um, I forgot who won when I watched them live. I forgot who won that match, but this match, Kevin Owens uh, did the stunner to Sami Zayn for the 1-2-3. And Kevin Owens defeats Sami Zayn. I was rooting for Sami Zayn, personally. Um, and then Logan Paul came in the ring. And then Logan Paul was kind of like showing respect to Kevin Owens. And Sami Zayn was like... What are you doing? He's the enemy. And then Logan Paul basically shoves Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn storms to the back. And then Kevin Owens didn't like that Logan Paul touched him. And he gives Logan Paul a stunner. So, yeah. That was an awesome match. Uh, could have used more time. Like I said, like one complaint I had with the show. You could have used a, lot, used a lot more time, man. Um, But, yeah. um, That match was amazing. Loved it. Next match, we have another match, which uh, I absolutely loved every second of it. This match was also about 10 minutes. We have the WWE United States Championship match. Riddle defending against Sheamus. They busted out some super cool moves in this match, man. Riddle's performance really grabbed me here. Going to this match, I was actually rooting for Sheamus, but during this match, I started rooting for Riddle. And by the way, didn't Sheamus like, show off his WrestleMania tie? He had like blue... like spray paint makeup on his face and then he just use he just has a regular ass entrance here Ugh, man but this match was awesome i i know i'm gonna forget some spots but i promise you every second of this match was so much fun started off with great technical wrestling some awesome like flippy stuff from uh both from riddle um awesome counters riddle kicked out of quite a lot of stuff actually and it had a beautiful ending after a beautiful match where Riddle was in the middle of like a, st a, a moonsault, like a rope assisted moonsault, and Sheamus bro kicks him mid air when he's upside down. Kind of reminded me of uh, um, Adam Cole kicking Ricochet at TakeOver Broken 4, or maybe it was Ricochet kicking Adam Cole, whatever way it was. Um, and then Sheamus pins Riddle for the 1 2 3. In an awesome match. I absolutely loved every second of this match. This might be, in my opinion, this might be the best US Championship match at WrestleMania ever. Honestly. They've kind of like, they kind of disrespect, like, they, we could, uh, we can start having better matches with the US title WrestleMania now. Like, this match was so awesome. A shame, because I, I really loved Riddle as champion, actually. I was like, I was upset when he won, but his reign, he's had a fun-ass reign, man, as, as US champion. Um, but Sheamus, you know, he definitely deserved the win regardless. Um, and that was awesome. Yeah. And next up, we have the Nigerian drum fight for the WWE Intercontinental Championship. I know that's a weird match, weird <laughs> first of its kind match. I just remembered that they didn't even use the drums in this match. Oh my gosh. Big E had an awesome WrestleMania worthy entrance I absolutely loved Big E's entrance to death. Um, um, I, uh, it actually almost brought me to tears, Big E's entrance. It was just so beautiful, man. Uh, this match was awesome for what it was. Um, this was another match I thought could have been used longer. And they didn't even, they actually had, it was basically a street fight. A Nigerian drum fight. Um... Like, and they actually had drums, like, as one of the usable weapons in this match. And they didn't even use them the whole match, and that cracked me up thinking about it. Uh, especially because of <laughs> and the title, but, like, this this match was awesome for what it was. Um, right off the bat, they both got kendo sticks, and they whacked the heck out of each other with kendo sticks. Uh, they got the steps involved. I thought Apollo Crews was going to do, like, a Simone drop or something to Big E on the steps. Uh, when they were fighting on the apron, and there were steps below, but he just kind of did it on did the, his move on the apron. Um, there was a there was actually a table spot, which was, which was pretty awesome. 
Apollo Crews uh, did a diving splash to Biggie uh, through the table, but Biggie moved out of the way. And then I was rooting for my man Apollo Crews to win the IC title. So when Biggie hit the big ending in this match, I was like, "Ah, oh, fucking!" But like, but then this guy, I forgot his name. This guy, the Baba Tunde. That's what some people call him, Baba Tunde, and uh, Baba Tun Baba. And Dabo, Dabakoto, Dabakato, I know you're probably like, what the heck are you talking about, mate? I know you're probably like that. Uh, but uh, he had, he came in, attacked Biggie right after he hit the big ending. And then Apollo Crews is on top of Biggie. One, two, three. My man, Apollo Crews is your brand new WWE Inter. Continental Champion! And I'm ecstatic. I'm so glad my man, Apollo Cruz is in a Continental Champion. I hope he has a good run with it. And, uh, yeah. This was an awesome match. Uh, now we have the next match, which was honestly a huge disappointment for me. I This next match really disappointed me. I was really excited for this match. And, and not, like, even the, the match itself both disappointed me and had an ending that pissed me off. Um, but I'll get into that. We have the WWE Raw Women's Championship match. We have Asuka defending against Rhea Ripley. It was still a good match. There were some nice counters between the two. There was this one spot that honestly, this one amazing spot in this match that surpassed any expectations I had for this match going in. That was when Asuka did this awesome, like, DDT to Rhea Ripley, like, on the apron, jumping back onto the floor. That was sick. That was absolutely sick. And, I don't know, this was just a solid match to me. It wasn't anything special. And, um, but, um, but, um, the ending, I don't know if I've said it publicly in a video before, but, I hate that Asuka's never won a match at WrestleMania. And, and you know, she, she's she, going into this WrestleMania, she was 0-3 at WrestleMania. And she should have won all three of those matches that she lost. She should have beaten Charlotte at WrestleMania 34. She should have, absolutely. I don't even know what the heck they were thinking not having a win the freaking uh, Women's Battle Royal at WrestleMania 35. She should have retained... Last year, the Women's Tag Team Championships last year against Bliss and Cross. And then, the, the, the ending to this match. What the freaking heck are you thinking? I mean, it's funny because, like, if Asuka had won those last three matches, um, or at least the last, or at least one of those three matches... That would that would have easily recontextualized this exact match's ending for me. I would have loved how this match ended if Asuka had won any... In fact, she should have won all three of those matches, but lost here. It was just out of nowhere, the freaking Riptide from Rhea Ripley, and that was it! Like, I didn't even get time to prepare that for a possible Asuka loss in this shit! Like... It's crazy. She sh Rhea should have beaten Charlotte last year. Oscar should have beaten Charlotte. But, but, but of course, you know, Vince has to whet his own appetite for Charlotte. And at the <laughs> I would, I keep in mind, I'm upset that Oscar lost. It's cr It sucks because I love both Oscar and Rhea Ripley. But Oscar losing was... If she if she didn't win those last three matches at WrestleMania, which she should have won, she could have at least won here, which really angered me, man. It really put me in a sour mood. Like far out. Like it's so frustrating, man. Like it's like why? Just why, man? You know, like. But uh, it was a solid match. Just a solid match. That's that's it. Just a solid match. Pretty disappointing match overall, but that one DDT spot was cool, and the ending 
reptile out of bloody nowhere, mate. Just, you know, like, far out. If she had, like I said, if she had won her WrestleMania matches the last three times that she should have, then I would have been ecstatic that Rhea Ripley won here, like. But then again, you know, I got Bobby Lashley retaining yesterday, and I thought there was a bigger chance of... I, I thought there was a much less chance of that happening than Oscar retaining here. Like, will Oscar ever win a body match at WrestleMania? Like, it's not fair, mate. Like, she should have won, like, her last three before this one. I would have been okay with her losing here if that was the case, you know? That's... The, some bullshit, mate. But now on, we, we go to the main event, the triple threat match for the WWE Universal Championship. We have the Tribal Chief, the head of the table, the big dog, Roman Reigns, defending against the men's 2021 Royal Rumble winner, Edge, and the Weasel who stole his way into this match, who cheated his way into this match, Daniel Bryan. Main event of WrestleMania, triple threat for the Universal Championship, Roman Reigns versus Edge versus Daniel Bryan. This match was awesome. This match was so much fun from the get-go. Um, <laughs> it was just fast-paced as heck. I love Jey Uso's interference, man. Uh, going into this match, I was rooting for Edge, but I was okay with either Roman or Edge winning. I really was. Either Roman or Edge, Daniel Bryan, <coughs> no, get Daniel Bryan out of this. I would have been so angry if Daniel Bryan had won, um, not only because he kind of ruined the dream match for all of us. But because that would have been most Mark pandering BS, mate. Um, regardless, this was an epic match. And actually, I do think it would have been better if it was just Roman and Edge one on one, because the stuff they did in this match together was amazing. They had incredible chemistry, actually. But um, uh, Jey Uso got involved like five times in this match, and I love that. Uh, the entrances were awesome. I loved how Roman took a while to come out. That was cool, actually. Um, Edge had these awesome white trunks. I mean, white uh, uh, tights. That was awesome. Um, I absolutely loved this match. This might be my favorite match of all of WrestleMania, either night one or two. In fact, it probably is, just because I found the ending very satisfying, actually. Um, but um, I love this match. It was so awesome. Just lots of great chemistry between all three men, actually. I'm a huge fan of all three of them, man. Um, um, Reigns did awesome in this match. Edge did awesome in this match. Daniel Bryan did awesome in this match. Um, there was this part in the match where, like, I think Roman was attempting a spear. And Edge did this awesome, like, float over into an execution uh, to Roman Reigns. That was a cool-ass spot. And I remember the sunset flip from uh, Edge, if I got the right move that I was trying to say. Um, that was cool. Um, Brian, um, um, oh, there was a lot that happened in this match. I just know, I'm, and I, I just know that I'm going to forget some of them. And I apologize. I'm mostly upset with myself about that. But this match was awesome. Love this match. Um, there was an awesome spot where Roman Reigns... And the crowd was chanting Roman sucks. Uh, smart crowd. Smock. Not smart. Smock is what I said. Roman Reigns powerbombed Bryan through the table. Which was cool. Um, Daniel Bryan has officially main evented WrestleMania twice, and both times he was smashed through the table. <laughs> um, uh, it was just such an awesome, fast paced triple threat, man. So much fun. The Edge and Reigns one on one stuff was glorious, man. Um, there was this awesome spot 
where I actually thought Edge was going to make Roman Reigns tap out, man. Like, Edge had uh, Roman Reigns in a cross face, uh, and like, and then, and then he grabbed a piece of a broken chair, and then he used that to add leverage, and then Daniel Bryan came in to uh, do a cross face on Roman Reigns as well, and then like, and then like Edge and Roman and Daniel Bryan kind of headbutted each other, and um. It was just such an awesome match, man. Um, and uh, Edge did get a spare on Daniel Bryan, and I thought that was going to be the end of it, man. That would have been the end of it, I reckon. Um, and then, like, he Edge went to get cheers. He did an awesome concerto to Daniel Bryan, and then he tried to do it to Roman Reigns, but Jey Uso got involved again. And, uh, and then eventually Roman Reigns did a concerto to Edge himself, and then he dragged Edge's body over with Daniel Bryan. On top of Daniel Bryan, Roman Reigns pinned them both at the same time. And Roman Reigns wins this triple threat match for the Universal Championship. Still Universal Champion. The big dog. The tribal chief. The head of the table. Roman Reigns. Going to this match, I was rooting for Edge, but like honestly, like after really thinking about it, I think Roman retaining would have been is was ended up being like the result I wanted the most. Honestly, I'm so happy Roman Reigns retained, and here's one big reason. And I know it kind of has a slightly not the best chance of happening. Certainly, maybe not anytime soon, but because. I really, really want John Cena, who was actually mentioned by Bailey tonight in a really assholey way. So even though you're hot, Bailey, and I love jacking off to you, um, screw you at the same time for that negative comment about Cena. <laughs> I still love you, but screw you at the same time. Um, I want, I wanted John Cena to be. The first wrestler to have won the WWE Championship, the World Heavyweight Championship, and the uh, Universal Championship. Now, there's still a chance that happens. There's still a chance John Cena will be the first to do that. Because if Edge O'Brien had won, then they would have done that first. I actually really thought Edge was going to win this. But Daniel Bryan winning the title here would have been the worst possible way to end WrestleMania, man. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, but, um, yeah, I am I was rooting for Edge. But, honestly, like, after thinking about it, I ended up rooting for Roman Reigns. And I wanted him to win this match the most. And it was absolutely awesome. And he absolutely did. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, that was another match I changed my mind on. I was rooting for... Uh, Edge going in, but then decided to root for the champion, just like how earlier tonight I was rooting for Sheamus going in, but then I ended up rooting for the champion. Uh, awesome WrestleMania, night two. Not as good as night one, but night one was amazing. Still, we can't. nothing will take away the awesomeness of night one, regardless of how this show went, guys. Uh... This was a flawed show to me. Night 1 was still so much better. But this was still an awesome night to a WrestleMania. And I'm really happy Roman Reigns retained. I'm kinda I kinda wanna rewatch that match already. But yes, that is your boys review of WWE WrestleMania 37 Night 2. If you guys have seen the show. Please let your boy know what you think. And if you enjoyed your boy's review, please let him know because he would very much appreciate that. Okay, guys. That's my review of both WrestleManias. I had an absolute blast. Hope you did too. WrestleMania 38 next year. Uh, 2022. Here comes the year-long wait for that, bro. Alright. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out.